Well, this is the Cloud Center dashboard. That'll become your single pane of glass across all cloud environments, users, subtenants, and applications. If you look at the cloud status over here, you can see this demo system is connected to several regions of Amazon, Azure, OpenStack, etc. Again, Cloud Center is a hybrid cloud management platform, and I have the ability to deploy any application profile to any of these cloud regions with no further requirements. This dashboard contains a lot of great high-level information about the applications and workloads that are running in the environment. For example, I can see cloud costs broken down by the different cloud types, VM hourly usage, and number of concurrently running VMs. For example, you can see that right now I have 13 currently running VMs. Beyond that, I can also see my budget of $50,000 here, of which I've consumed $12,500 uh, roughly. Um, this is part of our internal budgeting mechanism that can constrain how many cloud resources users are able to consume. I'll say more about it later, but these budgets can be applied to users, projects, or even whole tenants within the platform. Without spending too much time here, I can also see the last few running jobs, favorite deployments, notifications, and VM usage over time. Now this is really the main portal for the entire platform. So before we were looking at the dashboard, which gives you a high level view, um, this is the end user view where they will come to actually do work such as launching applications. Each of these buttons that you see here represents a complete application stack. Now, some of them are very simple, uh, just Windows, for example, or just CentOS, maybe just Red Hat. Um, or they could be more complex. They could be multi-tier applications. They could use container systems like Docker uh, or Docker Swarm. They might be uh, big data type applications like Hadoop. Could really be anything, even traditional COTS type applications. You can even see here, I've, I've got Cloud Center modeled within itself. So you can use Cloud Center to deploy Cloud Center, very apt. But let's now take a look at what's behind the scenes of these buttons. How do they actually work? when you build them. This is the Cloud Center application topology modeler. And you can see here, let me just spread these out a little bit. We've got a three tier application, WordPress in this case, but it's got a load balancer, it's got a web server, and it's got a database tier. As you can see, I have various services over here in the palette on the left-hand side that I can drag out into the page. When I drag one out, I get service-specific choices over on the right, such as which, which underlying image I want to use for this thing, how many nodes I want it to be. Remember, we're looking at IIS here, so potentially that could be a scalable tier. Um, which .NET framework to use, uh, where I want to get my deployment package from, those would be all my ASP files or whatever, and, and where I want those to go. Okay, so again, these are service-specific choices that relate to this IS service. We would see different choices for, for example, Jetty. Once we drag these out, we connect them with lines. Um, these lines really control the initialization order of the services from the bottom up. Now, these roughly correspond to uh, a VM each, um, though that certainly doesn't have to be the case. Um, so this would be a MySQL VM that gets spun up first, followed by Apache as a web server, and then finally the load balancer. Um, some of the services might be more than one VM, um, such as here for the web, the web tier. It's got a minimum of one to a maximum of four nodes within this tier, and I could certainly increase that. I could even set the minimum up a little bit higher if I wanted to make sure that it's always got high availability and all the load balancer logic gets, gets taken care of automatically. But I could even have zero VMs. Uh, for example, um, let's see here, I might pull out, I don't know, elastic load balancer, or this might be an external F5 load balancer if you want to use something in your own data center, but this wouldn't spin up a new VM. This would just connect to an existing F5. I could even use something like, I don't know, cloud formation if I wanted to. I could do some work with, uh, with a PaaS service like uh, Cloud Foundry or um, Puppet from a configuration management standpoint. So lots of different varieties of ways I can build up this application and make it as complex as I want it to be. And Cloud Center is not at all prescriptive 
as to the tools and technologies that you use to build up your application stack. Now that's all well and good, but let's look at building one from scratch because that's what uh, you'll want to do first thing, of course, is you'll say, well, how do I build one of these applications um, from the ground up? And besides that, um, what's kind of the minimum point of entry for this? So let me show you here as we model an application. That's it. Frankly, um, that's all you really need for an application and, and that might well be all you do on day one. A lot For a lot of our customers, it's really just Red Hat and Windows, maybe CentOS on that day one, right? But you still get a lot of value even when the what you're deploying is very simple. It's just basic VMs. Still, the governance and the budgets and the self-service portal and the compliance aspects to it um, still add tremendous value to the platform, even when the what you're deploying is um, very, very simple. Okay. So I'd start there and I'd come over here, maybe uh, give it a name, maybe a version if I want to, and then I would save it out and that'd be my application. And that would be a Red Hat button that would show up on somebody's um, end user portal and then they could click that button and get a Red Hat server. Very simple. You might say, okay, um, what's day two? If that's day one, how do we make that a little bit more complex? And that's where you can say, all right, well, we don't necessarily need the entire stack, but I just want to give somebody a MySQL button to click. Everybody keeps calling and they ask me for MySQL, and I just want to give them a MySQL button. So boom, that's your app. There's no, um, there's no database data that gets bootstrapped in there or anything. It's just a naked, empty MySQL server at that point. And that's perfectly fine. Again, that's nice. Um, from kind of a database as a service model. Now, one interesting thing you could do here too, again, think about not all of these are gonna be VMs. You could do this. You could have a SQL Server um, button here, and this is not gonna spin up necessarily a new VM with a new copy of SQL Server and a new everything. Um, what it may well do is just connect to an existing SQL Server and create a new database instance on that SQL Server. Okay, so just food for thought. All right, now let's take a look at actually deploying one of these things. So I could, um, you know, if there's one in particular you want me to click, go for it. But um, barring that, I think I'll just click over here on my, my WordPress here. And we'll go through and so I'll give it a name um, and I'll choose the version of the application that I want. In this case, I'll choose five. Um, and that, by the way, that's the version of the Cloud Center application profile. It doesn't necessarily relate to the WordPress version per se. Um, and over here, I've got my tags. Um, I'll choose demo. Now, tags are part of how we implement governance policy. So you can see that when I apply that demo tag, it's going to constrain how long that, that application is allowed to live. It locks me into this 12-hour aging policy. Okay. Then there's a few, a little bit more Q&A here. Um, this is set up to automatically register itself with my monitoring tool, Sensu in this case. Um, it's pulling a specific set of code, again, for this application profile. This is not the WordPress version necessarily. This is the version of the Cloud Center app, and this is the tag that I used to, to pull that code, and then um, the S3 path that we're going to use for backups and uh, in a migration scenario. Anyway, then I'll click Next, and then I get to pick which of the clouds I want to deploy to within my demo deployment environment. So remember, the tag locked me into an aging policy. It's also locking me into a deployment environment, in this case, the demo environment. And I have a more limited selection of clouds to choose from in that case. Um, Virginia is fine, um, you, Amazon Virginia. And then over here, I get to pick which instance type I want. Now, again, for demo purposes, just to show you, I've actually hidden the hardware specs and the individual costs of these uh, instance types. That's a configurable option in the deployment environment, and you may or may not want to expose those details to your end user, right? But at the very least, they'll get the names of the instance types. Okay, and then once I have all this dialed in, I'm choosing the VPC I want, what subnet do I want that thing to go to, right? So all the cloud-specific choices, even though I can deploy the app to any cloud, but that doesn't mean we're being lowest common denominator. Remember, um, in some of those services, I had, I had cloud specific things like ELB or cloud formation. Um, and over here, I'm getting cloud specific choices as well, which VPC, which availability zone and network. Okay. Don't want it to have a public IP address. And then once I get all that done, then I'm going to go over here and click deploy. And then once the application is deployed, it shows up right over here on my deployments page. 
Let me click into one of these, maybe this roller web log here, to, to give you an example. And we can see, again, it's um, basically exactly what we built in the topology modeler, but where that was a blueprint, this is the actual house. These are the services that are deployed. We've got a database here, MySQL. You can see it's node ID. Here's my node ID, oops. Um, my node ID, the IP address, uh, both public and private, and then a set of logs that show all of the little things that happened inside that VM during the course of launching this application. I can also click this button right here and get logged in. Here, that's interesting. That's a little better. Uh, so you can see I got logged in. Now this is an HTTP SSH proxy layer. And one of the nice things here is I was able to get logged into this machine, but you didn't have to give me a password or an SSH key. In fact, port 22 is not even open from me to that VM. It's all going through Cloud Center. And what that means is no matter what I do as an end user, you as the administrator are maintaining control over how and whether I can access that VM or not. That's very important from a security perspective, right? You don't want people to have to have direct SSH access to your, to your machines. Okay, and then obviously if I click this link, there's the roller web log, the complete application stack was deployed. All right, so we looked at how we uh, model an application. We looked at how we would, um, how we could go in and see the details of the deployed application. Um, now let me take you through some of the other parts of the software that relate to governance. So we're gonna start that over here under the admin area and look at users. We have, we can configure local users. We have groups that we can put those users into and obviously roles. Another nice thing we can do is use activation profiles. And activation profiles are very important when we start looking at single sign-on. So, you know, we don't wanna have to have all of these local users in here. Um, in production scenarios, we typically would connect to something like ADFS or Okta, really any SAML2 uh, provider, um, and that's gonna allow us to have users logging in automatically based on, for example, an AD role or something like that, or an AD group. Um, but in order to facilitate that, we have act activation profiles that provide defaults for all of those incoming users based on what group you put them into. Okay, so they'll get activated appropriately and they'll get assigned to that group, but then also a usage plan that goes along with that. Remember, usage plans are the way that we control how much people are able to consume out of this because you're going to have the ability to accelerate all of this but you also want to make sure that you're uh, putting guardrails on the road so people are are uh, you know not getting too out of hand now these budgets can be um, hourly uh, based so they can be like a, a number of hours of cumulative usage uh, could be concurrently running vms um, or it could even be dollars, like you can just say, hey, you have $5,000 worth of budget that you can consume, and that can be applied to a user or a project or an entire tenant. Now, speaking of tenants, um, Cloud Center is a fully multi-tenant platform, uh, meaning that to end levels, you'll be able to create these little self-contained environments in which you can have some set of users. You could even have them connecting to different um, single sign-on platforms, for example. And that's a really nice way to organize the platform around the way your organization is, is set up. So you could have a tenant for IT and another tenant for, I don't know, marketing and another tenant for security or whatever. You might do it geographically. Maybe you have a tenant for, I don't know, Asia Pack and one for EMEA or something like that. So each one of those functions has its own kind of self-contained unit, but then they can share 
up and down that stack, not across, but up and down that stack. So you, from a central IT perspective, could model an application and then share that down with other of your subtenants that might want to launch that application. You become kind of a service provider um, to your internal or external customers. Now, another important part of all of this are the policies. Um, now, action policies can do just about anything, kind of an event trigger based, uh, based system. Um, scaling policies are used to trigger auto scaling within the platform and say you want to go, you know, when it gets up to a, you know, 75% utilization, add another two servers or something like that. That's set up through, an, through a scaling policy. Um, but this last one is the simplest and it's really my favorite, which is aging policies. Uh, when you when you set up aging policies, um, you can use tags to force the termination or the suspension of workloads after a period of time. When you are um, when your users uh, are should not be using them anymore, right? So they can spin up for two hours in this area. You can apply them to different areas. So two hours over here, twelve hours in maybe QA, and then maybe no aging policy at all in uh, in production. So this right here puts a complete clamp down on VM sprawl and really reduces and optimizes the amount of money that you're spending on your cloud or on your VMware uh, resources over time. 